obviously it's unusual to have a virgin hero because we think of heroes in romance novels as being incredibly experienced. Now the, the heroine often comes along and she's never made love and what do you know? First time, perfect. No pain, no blood, no nothing, it's great, little pull, she has five orgasms, you know, the experience none of us had, right? But hopefully, probably very few of us actually made love to a virgin male either, because our culture kind of does push boys and men into a lot more experience, perhaps, than women have. So I wanted to play with that and have my heroine is a virgin, Imogen is a virgin, she's been waiting for her husband to return from... Um, darkest Africa where he's out exploring for years but and she think he's gonna come back they're gonna consummate their marriage which is arranged and then the, she'll finally find out you know what it's like and what she finds out is that he waited for her so this is a lot of fun because for example chapter one opens up with her telling her friend Gemma he's a virgin what imagine your friend saying he's a virgin. what He's a virgin, and your husband is a virgin, and he won't bed me. So I've set up there this, this sort of double conundrum where he's not going to bed her until he's sure that they want to be together, until he knows that the marriage is going to continue. So it's not only that he's a virgin, he's also not jumping into bed with her. And of course, that for any woman is incredibly insulting. Right? We, we, don't, we don't like that. So what she did was she sets up a plan. She's not going to let him make his own mind about what's going to happen. She's going to make sure that he doesn't have some kind of problem for one thing. Because of course, if this was your girlfriend saying, yeah, I met someone on Match.com, but he's a virgin, you'd be saying, ooh, <laughs> alert, alert, <laughs> alert, right? Um, so then I get to this part in the book. Isidore nodded. She had read Tacitus on how to conduct a war and Machiavelli on how to conduct a kingdom. She could launch a campaign so overwhelming that her husband would never knew what hit him. The Dowager Duchess, that's her husband's mother, was almost certainly attempting to convince her son to wear some clothing befitting a duke. Well, Isidore was going to spend her time trying to get him out of those same clothing. She pushed her plate away. Advanced planning is crucial to any plan of war. If I send a message to Signora Angelico, she will send me a nightdress on an urgent basis. Gemma grinned. That's a brilliant trap. A capable man presented with such a nightdress and your figure inside will react swiftly. And if not, Isidore reached up and pulled the bell cord to summon her maid. Cosway's days as a bachelor and a virgin were numbered. It's very easy for me to make him an alpha male. He's based on a real explorer in the period, so who discovered the source of the Blue Nile. So he's coming from Africa. He's been leading men. I mean, he is big, muscled, strong. And I think when you read the book, you know, his alpha qualities are not really in question, except on this one area that he's waited for her and that he wants his marriage to be a good one. And she's waited for him. She just wants to have sex. So yes, it creates a very different conundrum that I think plays out in a very fun way. And of course, let's face it, we're all women, she wins. <laughs> this is just a coda to that discussion of virginity, because you have to know that I am a professor, and therefore I get to be an absent-minded professor. And the thing about an absent-minded professor is that sometimes I mix up the names of my characters and... It's because, you know, frankly, I like them so much, it's almost like they're my friends. So Imogen is one of my older friends, and Isidore is one of my newer friends. And I should have been talking about Isidore marrying a virgin, because in fact, Imogen marries someone who's got quite enough experience. That happens in, um, okay, I can't remember what book that happens in. <laughs>